We've always believed that robotics was going to be important, and robotics were autonomous machines. Computers, machinery that can um, operate and perform and function autonom autonomously uh, in, an, in a complicated environment, uh, we've always felt was going to be a very large market. This is how we're going to bring computers into the physical world. This is how we're going to bring artificial intelligence into the physical world. And the simplest autonomous machine is the self-driving car. The simplest? Yeah. Now, of course, of course it's, the, it's the most impactful uh, and the reason for that is mobility is the move, moving of people and things, and, and uh, society depends on mobility. Uh, but because of all of the years of, of, uh, of, um, of driving, we've got all kinds of rules and um, uh, the, the, the roads and the systems and the infrastructure is all designed so that even, even uh, grandmothers and grandfathers can drive, and so kids can drive you know, with, with just a 10-minute 10 minute driver's test, um, you know, anybody can drive. And so, so obviously it's a skill that's relatively simple. And now of course it's, it's, very, it's very complicated in the sense that, that um, it's easy for you and I to do it, but how do you now take all of this thing called driving skills and codify it into a program that we can then have a machine perform and that turns out to be incredibly hard. Now that, that is one level of the complexity but um, uh, there are several other levels of complexity. In the final analysis, uh, it, it's very likely that even something as simple as a self-driving car in the context of autonomous machines will still be the most complex computer system the world's ever done. And the reason for that is because it's obviously driving very fast. The performance of the computer has to be fast. It has to react very quickly. Um, and and um, these computers can't fail. You know, imagine a computer that mm -hmm. can't fail. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my laptop still hangs after all these years. Right. And so how do you create a computer where when it fails, it detected that it failed, and it will continue to somehow perform its function and drive you safely? So when it fails, it doesn't fail. I mean, that sounds kind of a, like a weird thing, you know? I want you to build me something that when it fails, it doesn't fail. You know, when it fails, it continues to operate. That's called fail operational. And um, uh, the airline industry does it through brute force. Uh, they have three different versions of a computer in a, in a plane. And um, they're actually uh, designed by three different teams. And they're redundant. They're redundant and diverse. Uh-huh.